from the number one night team, a former police sergeant. At the center of a sex scandal. It involves body camera video showing him have sex with a woman in his office. Monsoon alert. Summer storms bring blowing dust and rain. Will we dry out overnight? 12 News exclusive. I was like, wow, it happened to me, and I'm lucky to even be alive. Two teens are reuniting at the spot where the lightning bolt nearly killed them. Only on 12 News, blowing dust, intense lightning, relentless rain. We're verifying if our summer storms really cause monsoon migraines. Developing now, predator priests. Priests were raping little boys and girls. An explosive new report outlining decades of abuse and cover-ups. War of words. Omarosa claiming she's heard the president using the N-word as Mr. Trump blasts back. Arizona's news leader in action for you tonight. 12 News at 10 starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Monsoon alert. The 12 News storm team is out tonight tracking a weakening line of storms that have marched across the valley, bringing rain to a lot of us. We'll have Lindsay's storm track in just a couple of minutes. But first, tonight's big story involves a former police sergeant at the center of a sex scandal, an investigation finding body cam video of him having sex in his office. And that's not all for a cop who's been fired not once, but twice. Team 12's Bianca Bono is live in the Alert Center with what we're learning tonight. Bianca? Mark Rebay, investigators say they found a folder on Anthony Duran's work computer containing sexually explicit images, including body camera footage of him appearing to show him having sex with a woman. Nearly all of the video is extremely X-rated and, of course, not appropriate for television. So a warning, some of the still images you're about to see may be a bit graphic. <laughs> Video shows Superior Police Sergeant Anthony Duran switching on his department issued body camera and angling it toward himself. The video shows him wearing his uniform, sitting at his desk, having sex with a woman. A report from the Pinal County Sheriff's Office reveals that video saved in a folder on Duran's desktop titled Fun Time, alongside 36 gigabytes of more pornographic videos, as well as nude photos Duran appeared to take of himself. Investigators also discovering naked pictures of an underage girl in the same folder. The sergeant viewing the images writing in his report, the images and the fact they were intersected with pictures of sexual situations caused me to physically react with shaking hands and upset stomach. PCSO later discovering the images are of Duran's daughter. The Pinal County Attorney's Office not charging Duran with a crime, but the report concluding there is suspicion that some grooming behavior may be present. 12 News learning Duran previously worked for the Pima County Sheriff's Department, which also conducted an internal investigation. In that case, Duran accused of having inappropriate contact with a woman while on duty in his uniform in his patrol car. Duran's peace officer certification then suspended for six months in July of 2013. And the Superior Police Department confirms to 12 News that it fired Duran in April of this year and is declining to comment any further. We did try tracking down Duran, but have been unable to find him. We're live in the Alert Center tonight. Bianca Bono, 12 News at 10. All right, Bianca, thank you. Now back to our monsoon alert now as storms push through parts of the valley. A lot of lightning out there tonight. Check out this rain coming down on I-17 on the Daisy Mountain Freeway just a little while ago. Our ADOT cameras rolling as drivers brave the slick streets. And our 12 News storm tracker getting in on the action, chasing the sporadic showers as they move from Phoenix to Old Town Scottsdale. Of course, it all began as all monsoon storms usually do with a wall of dust. And right now we're bracing for what's to come next. Meteorologist Lindsay Riley is standing by with more on that. Hey, Lindsay. Yeah, and we're still seeing some showers and thunderstorms marching across the area. This is the wide view. You can see the entire state here. Still seeing a little bit of light rain left over in Phoenix, but the stronger storms now starting to push west and along I-10 toward La Paz County. We have some very strong thunderstorm activity moving toward the Tucson area. We also had some severe
severe weather over Safford earlier. Now just some light shower activity left there, and we're seeing some light to moderate rain out toward Prescott. But these are the strongest storms now in the state, starting to press their way into La Paz County. Now we are going to stay active as far as additional thunderstorm threats, both Wednesday and Thursday. Additional storms are likely in the metro before rain starts to lower as far as intensity and coverage as we near the weekend. I'll have a closer look at your monsoon meter coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Lindsay, thank you. Well, speaking of storms, 12 news there exclusively as two teens both struck by lightning while playing at a park during a monsoon storm last week reunite for the first time. The teens reuniting, reliving rather, their frightening brush with death. Team 12's Antonia Mejia joining us from the newsroom with their shocking story of survival. Antonia? The boys' parents say doctors told them their cases are nothing short of a miracle. And now these boys are reuniting at the park where the lightning bolt zapped them. Back together again. Yeah. Javier Tapia and Josiah Weidman seen each other for the first time since lightning yeah, hit them last weird. week. How do you guys feel? Good. Good. The teens at Moreno Park in El Mirage. Yeah, I think it was right there when we got hit. Video from a nearby home catching the exact moment a bolt strikes the boys. I fell down. I think I fell down like right here. And he fell down just right there. Josiah can't remember anything that happened, but Javier recalls the moment he fell to the ground. I couldn't, I couldn't feel my legs. At first, I couldn't feel my arms. I was just right there, calling his name. He wouldn't wake up. Did you ever lose consciousness? That you? I almost did. Like, it but my vision blacked out. I couldn't see anything. And I couldn't hear anything. But miraculously, both these teens are alive and recovering. My foot still hurts. My legs hurt occasionally. Really? Yeah, like this one right here only though. Yeah, you're really, you're really strong too. Josiah uh, coming out uh, once again with the skateboard he had that evening. So they said the metal on the skateboard attracted it. Yeah, that's what people are saying. It's very well what could have been the attraction, but it's definitely what yeah. has these boys out here and looking out for each other more than ever before. I'm just happy that he's okay. Happy you're okay, bro. Thank you. We're also glad these boys are okay. Now, Josiah's parents say that he suffered a concussion and doctors are still keeping a close eye on him. So they continue to ask for support to cover his medical expenses. They set up a GoFundMe page and we'll have that information on our webpage at 12news.com. Antonia Mejia, 12 News. I still cannot get over how lucky those boys are. Well, here's some more hot headlines happening tonight. A man was arrested and booked into jail last night after police say he admitted that he intentionally rammed his vehicle into another man outside of Walmart near Reams and Greenway in surprise. Investigators say the driver, a 19 year old man named Chet Becker Jr. and the pedestrian knew each other and had been arguing about how the driver had been treating his girlfriend. And when the victim walked in front of Becker's car, he hit the gas. The victim was taken to a local hospital in critical condition. A Phoenix dad is accused of fatally beating someone who tried to enter a bathroom stall that his teenage daughter was using. Police say 40 year old Melvin Harris drove to a convenience store to pick up his daughter and her friends. He later was informed that a man tried to enter the stall his daughter was using. The man left the store and was pointed out to Harris, who punched him in the face and allegedly kicked and stomped on him. The unidentified victim was taken to the hospital with a broken nose and brain injuries and later died. And check out this security camera footage just released of a drive-by shooting in Phoenix. It shows two men looking into a car and pointing a gun at a home. As they're driving off, one of the suspects opens fire, hitting both the home and the car. Thankfully, no one was hurt. If you recognize these guys, you're asked to call Silent Witness at 480-WITNESS. There's a $1,000 reward for any information that leads to an arrest. New at 10, a former Mesa City Councilman caught on camera accosting hikers who he says are trespassing on his property. The videos now posted online show Bill Jaffa calling police as soon as someone steps on the trail near his sprawling estate. Take a look at this. 
I mean, yeah, I've got a woman uh, trespassing on our property. Could you send police over right away? We feel that we're threatened. What's your address? 8448 East Teton. We've got her on video as well. Team 12's Nicole Zymek is joining us now from Mesa with details on this desert dispute. Nicole. Yeah, this is the trail in question, and it has been at the center of some pretty heated debates. What does the trail say? Where does the trail say? Are you being aggressive with me? Tense moments between Bill Jaffa, does look, it matter to you that look, you're on our property? Look. His wife, does it matter to this you? is what sent us. And neighbor. It. It's a street. We own the street. We own he's the jumping over his fence. He's yelling at people. His wife's yelling at people. He says that they're threatening him. He says that they're trespassing. Sean Stanmark lives in the area. The Jaffas haven't confronted Sean, but he knows people who have. It's not just an, a one time. You know, one time, all right, he had a bad day. Do you see your spikes on the road? Do you see those property spikes? I was not on your the woman property. woman is very aggressive. I guess if you stay on one part, he's fine. But if you deviate at all, he attacks people. Not physically, but verbally. Property you walked line. off the trail. That's why it's all. You know you what? Right off. 12 News reaching out to Jaffa to ask him to clarify where he and his wife have seen people crossing. But so far, he hasn't responded. But Jaffa is saying sorry to his community on the next door app saying in part, I could have handled the situation with this particular hiker better. Could you send police over right away? It appears some of the confusion may stem from the city of Mesa recently rerouting a portion of the Hawes Loop Trail. In a statement, the city says the new part of the trail, quote, was never on Mr. Jaffa's property. In fact, it shifted the trail farther away from his property. The city of Mesa says it plans to build a fence to hopefully clear up this issue within the next few weeks. In Mesa, Nicole Zymek, 12 News. Developing now, predator priests. Priests were raping little boys and girls. An explosive new report outlining decades of abuse and cover-ups. War of words. Omarosa claiming she's heard the president using the N-word as Mr. Trump blasts back. Oh dear! Oh dear God! A deadly bridge collapse caught on camera. Only on 12 News, blowing dust, intense lightning, relentless rain. We're verifying if our summer storms really cause monsoon migraines. Chick-fil-A using all of us as guinea pigs. And the new face joining the This Is Us cast. You're watching 12 News, the official home of the Arizona Cardinals. Cards taken on the Saints this Friday. Coverage starts at 4.30. Tomorrow on 12 News at 10, selfies and skin cancer. We put a health risk rumor to the test. Getting a headset to wear when you're talking on the phone can be beneficial. What a dermatologist reveals when we verify, that's tomorrow on 12 News at 10.